There you are now, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're bringing you another machining video. I know there's been uh, a good few uh, comments in the comment section of the last few videos asking to see some more machining videos. So a project has just come on hand here today that I said I would bring you guys along with me on. So this here is a, a rear swing arm uh, from the Mini and uh, it's one that I'm gonna be overhauling. So it's gonna get a new pin this end. Uh, we have them on order, they just haven't arrived in yet and i am re uh well what would be in the term rebushing but i'm going to show you a machining process that i put these arms through uh, which is a bit different than bushing so uh, these arms originally from the factory have a pin that they swing on so this pin is what the arm rotates and on one end of the arm uh, is a full complement roller bearing and when i say full complement what i mean is uh, there's no cage in there it's completely full of rollers that's called a full complement bearing so that sits on one end and on the other end from the factory, they would have had a bushing. So this bushing would have been reamed, pressed into the arm, reamed to size and the pin would have run in it. Now, something that I've been doing for probably about the last five years anyway, is on any competition arms that I built for um, cars, and in fact, some customers actually asked me to do this modification for them as well, is I, modify the arm to allow another full complement roller bearing to sit this end. Now there's a couple of reasons why the arm wasn't built in this way in the first place. One is that they figured that the load duties were light out here um, and that meant that it didn't need a roller bearing and would get away with a bushing. Another reason is you have to remember that minis were built for economy and speed of assembly. Having a bronze bushing this end and running a ream through, through was much easier than the pretty complicated bit of uh, machining that has to be done to have two roller bearings. Effectively, the shaft has to be line bored. Well, the two bores in the um, swing arm have to be line bored, which is a pretty lengthy, complicated process. Now, I've come up with a way of doing this myself on my milling machine that gets me really good results every time I do it. So I'm going to show you guys how it is that I do that. Let's get this arm cleaned up and then we can bring it over to the milling machine and get started with the machining process. So I just want to clean this arm off first uh, in the um, wash tank, uh, just so that I can uh, be working with something a little less greasy. Um, than it is um, so uh, we'll just give this a bit of a rinse and then we'll uh, take out that um, bearing that's in there um, these arms are often stuffed full of grease uh, so you kind of have to just get in there get dirty with it and uh, get as much of that grease out as you can and um, the grease can sometimes uh, be hard to break up but um, what I normally do is, after the machining process, I have a uh, hot wash that I can put these through or I give them a blast out with the um, hot pressure washer. And that kind of does the same, same job. In case anyone is wondering why I'm not wearing gloves here, um, this uh, degreasing solution I'm using is a uh, brand that is completely uh, uh, bio-neutral so it doesn't have any solvents or um, any uh, nasty toxics that will damage you. Uh, trying to keep our carbon neutralisms going on here. So it's just a um, sort of a heavy detergent solution that works really well for for cleaning it. Well, it has a nice smell as well okay I think we'll get the bushing out of this now and then we can start setting up for the machining process the next job to do here is to pull this bushing out now I have a way of doing it there's loads of really good uh, videos classic mini workshop Keith has some good videos on stripping these arms and Cole over at classic mini DIY also has some good videos in this I'll link them down in the description below my method for doing this is a little bit more rudimentary uh, I have access to some uh, big old taps and dies so what I actually do is I just have this particular tap here and I'll tell you what size it is now um, it's uh, M22 uh, so I just wind this tap in uh, to make a tread in the old bushing. Uh, you want to get 
good bit of meat in there if you can because um, you're going to be pulling on this bushing and you want to kind of pull on it pretty centrally. Just wind that in there. Once the tap is wound in, then just I just flip the arm over in the vise. Grip it there. Now the ear is holding it. Uh, and then just with a piece of uh, round steel bar, that's gone down and it's sitting on the tap now. And you can just drive the bushing out. I'm not taking out this roller bearing yet. We will be replacing this roller bearing, but I want to use this as reference and I don't put a new bearing in and drop uh, metal chips down into it. So I'm gonna reuse the old bearing. Then when we have the bore done this side and we're happy with it, we'll put a new bearing in here and then a new bearing in this side. We'll go get this set up in the milling machine. We're at the milling machine now and the next process is going to be boring this hole. So what we need to do is get this arm set up on the table of the mill uh, in the right alignment so that we can bore this hole and really a bit like painting where uh, the most work in painting is the preparation and then the actual putting of paint onto the car is probably the least amount of um, time spent with any machining process the setup is where it is all at getting the setup right getting the setup clean is what gets you a, a good end result. So what we want to end up with is, we want to end up with a central bore going down through this arm from this bearing uh, bore here to this bearing bore here, which is exactly parallel with this pin here. So this is the pin that the wheel bearing mounts on. So if we want to have the wheel bearing dead square with the pin uh, that the arm swings on, then we need the bores that the bearings are in to be in a uh, parallel alignment with this arm. Now I have a few bits made up over the years to allow me to do this uh, and I start with uh, some old uh, swing arm pins which I modified uh, to get some reference points on the milling machine. So the first one here is a, a cut off rear swing arm. So this I know sits in the bearing that we left in there perfectly. Uh, so I mount that in one end of the milling machine, just with a couple of swing arm washers. So we mount that in one end and we pinch that up. And that gives us our first point of reference. Now this pin is going to be pretty square with this table in this position, okay? It's gonna be pretty much at 90 degrees standing up. We can't uh, rely on that, but it can certainly give us a good starting point. The second pin we have is going to pick up the end of the swing arm. So we, again, we've two washers here and we're just going into a T-nut here on the table. Now, we've got to get the arm into position now before we can uh, go much further. So this arm has adjustability built into it, or sorry, this uh, pin boss has adjustability built into it and I'll show you how that works in a minute. So we'll get the arm up here. So we left that bearing in there so that, bit, that original swing arm bearing sits there. And what we now want to get is we want to get this pin sitting underneath the hole at this end. So that's one of the three holes that mounts the rear brake disc on. This pin will square itself up with the table once we pinch it down because the T-nut will pull it square. So we'll know that pin is standing up there pretty straight. So we'll lock that in. Now the arm needs to be able to float up and down, which it can. So the arm can move up and down on that joint. So now what we need to do is to dial this pin in with the horizontal axis, uh, or sorry, with the vertical axis of the milling machine. Okay, so we want this pin square up and down with the vertical axis of the milling machine. What that means then is if this is square in this direction and square in this direction, we can then come over to this bore, find our center on this bore and bore the bearing. And that'll mean we know our pin is going to be square straight through the arm with the rear wheel. You would not believe how far this can be out from the factory. So if you think about the standard way that we would normally do this, we would put a bronze bushing in here and we'd ream it off of that roller bearing the other end. Uh, 
the setups I have found massive indifferences between the angle of this pin and the angle of this pin. Sometimes, you know, angles going off at two, three, four, five degrees uh, away from each other. That might not seem like a lot. And for a road car, it probably wouldn't be a lot. It would be acceptable. And you could probably get it out of it with a adjustable camber bracket. But what we want to try and do is we want to end up with the best starting point that we can on the back of our car. So a bit of time spent here gets our pin aligned. I'm gonna just get a few more bits set up here and then we'll start doing the alignment process. We're set up now to allow us get this uh, arm dialed in. So the first plane I'm going to try and get is the pin in the uh, axis, the X axis. So I want to get the pin standing up straight. So the pin now at the moment might be leaning this way, it might be straight, it might be leaning that way. So how we measure that is with a dial indicator gauge. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up and down the arm. So as I roll down the arm, you'll see the numbers changing on the dial indicator gauge. Okay, so as we get to the bottom here, we have 20. Let's zero the gauge out. Gauge is on zero now. Bring it back up to the top. And the difference will be how much out the arm is. So when we get to the top here, we have 0.15 in the difference. Now, the number is positive in 0.15. That means that the top of the arm is towards us. So if I pull that gauge, so that means that the top of the arm is this way. So rather than being square on the table, it is leaning this way slightly. So if you come over here, what I have set up here off the suspension link this is the old, the original suspension link, is I have a clamp and I have some shim stock underneath here. So I can now adjust the plane of the angle of the arm by adding or subtracting shim stock here, which will tilt the arm either that way or that way. When I get exactly the right dimension, I can lock the arm down in that plane by using this, but it won't affect the arm in the other plane, the, the second one that we need to adjust. So we'll add some shim stock here and we'll get this arm up. Now we know already that the top of the arm is in the wrong direction, so we're gonna add another small amount of shim stock under here and see if that brings us uh, into the right uh, orientation. Give that little tap. And then we'll cinch down the bolt. It's important that we put this bolt tight every time before we take a measurement because we want that arm fixed really solid. So we go back over here to our uh, gauge, we bring it down to the bottom. So we're now at the bottom of the pin. We'll zero our gauge and we'll bring it up the way. Okay, so we have 0.24 now. So the arm still needs to go more uh, needs to stand up more straight. So if I flex the arm there, you can see as I press on the arm, I'm bringing it into straight. So that tells me that I need more shim stock under here. So we let this back off again. And we'll add shim stock. We have some finer stuff now because we're getting close to the dimension. So we'll put a bit of finer stuff in there. the arm again. Bring our arm back down. You have to check your zero every time because uh, it can move. So we'll zero it out and we'll bring it back up. So we brought it down yet again, it was at 0 0.2, we're down to 0.19 now. So again, add another small amount of shim stock and we'll get there. Now you could play around with this by letting some tension off this bolt, but I don't want to do that because it would put play into the top of the arm. So I want to have this arm just really tight with the shim stock underneath it, giving me the measurement I want. The shim stock will crush as I pull this down, which is why the measurements change. Oh, 
Okay, let's go back down to our zero again. You'll notice already there is a change. Let's go back up there now and see where we go. So what you'll see is as I'm letting that off, it's coming back closer to zero. So we're really close now. Okay, so we have that pin pretty much in where we want. We're gonna get set up now and do the other orientation. Okay, so we have the pin square in this direction, so we have it standing up straight this way. The next direction we need to get is fore and aft, so we need to get the pin square fore and aft as well. And then that will tell us that our arm is standing straight up in the middle of the machine, which then just means we need to find the center on this bore and we can bore the arm. So if we come in here, you'll see I have the dial gauge set up. So we bring it down to the bottom, always start at the bottom of the pin and zero at the dial gauge which i have the dial gauge on zero so we bring it up to the top and take our measurement so we bring it up to the top of the pin and see where we are so we're 0.12 it's a negative reading so that means we're 0.12 meaning that it has gone it's tilting out that way how i adjust this is with this setup i have here so i have two nuts one on the top and one on the bottom and if I loosen this nut, I bring the arm down towards the milling machine. And if I tighten that nut and loosen that nut, I bring the arm up. We know we have a negative reading here. So if you watch the gauge, you'll see, as I uh, loosen that nut there, I can bring tension onto this. And you can see that negative reading is decreasing there on the clock. Okay, so we'll decrease it by half and we'll check again. So let's bring that back down to the zero point and see are we still at zero. Zero at our gauge and bring it back up to the top. So we still have a minus, so we'll bring it up another bit. We've got our zero there. Zero at our gauge. Bring it back up the way. So we still need another little bit on. So bring in another little bit of tension. Back down to the bottom. Why do I always uh, start at the bottom and zero and bring it up? I'm allowing for play in the spindle shaft of the mill machine. So if you see here, if I move the spindle here at the mill machine, you can see I can get a couple of millimeters either way in it. So when I change direction between bringing the spindle up or bringing the spindle down, I change the torque reaction on the gear. So I want to only measure it in one direction so I get accuracy, okay? So I have zero here, bring it back up the way and see where I am small bit so we're, we're only moving this by just the most minute amount every time very small distances so we bring it down then I'm gonna cinch down this. I know I'm getting close now, so I'm gonna cinch this top, top nut down. And what that should mean is that it's going to retain the setting that we get. We're playing now with hundreds of a millimeter, so, you know, we're very close to where it should be. The play that's, that you see here now could even be in this, you know, I can put this in and out of it 
by moving around here because we're within hundreds of a millimeter. I'm happy at 0.5 or 0.05. Anywhere around there gives me a number I'm very happy with. So 0.4, I'm happy enough with that. That means now that we've got the pin squared up in both this direction and we've got the pin squared up in this direction. Next thing we have to do is find the center of this bore and then we can bore for the bearing. So I have the center finder set up here. This is a wonderful little piece of kit. It's a live center finder. So as I fire up the milling machine, what you'll see is the needle is jumping around wildly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the X axis until I see the needle doing the least amount. So that makes it worse. So I bring it in until I see less needle movement. And then I'm gonna adjust the Y axis to do the same thing. So now what you can see is the needle is jumping less and less. So we keep tweaking these until we start getting the needle to move as little as we possibly can. And that's how we start finding our center. And it's little adjustments that make this. Okay, so you can see now, we're starting to get very close now. Okay. We then lock the table when we're on center. Now what you can see is it's kind of after moving a small bit again, so I'll tweak the table when they're snug. So just see, can we get a little bit more in it there? Come back the way a little bit now. So it's making it worse. Better. Makes it worse. Makes it better. Okay, now we're gonna just get a little small bit more tension into our center finder um, because uh, it could do it just a small bit more tension. More, The more tension you get on the center finder, the more uh, easily your readings are to read. So I'll give it another spin here now. That's us, we're on center. Okay, let's get set up to bore this uh, hole. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken some preliminary measurements. So that bearing measures up at exactly 27 millimeters. And uh, if we check this bore, we have 23.65 there. Check it this way. 23.8 so it's floating somewhere around 23.8 23.7 what that tells us is that we have about three millimeters to come out of this bore in other words in order to get this bearing to fit now we want a press fit in this bearing but I only want a very very light press fit I'm going to go for about point um, one or even point uh, eight I want just the tiniest bit undersized because I just want this bearing to hold. I don't want it to be pinched in any way or to change the dimension of that bearing in any way. So the first thing we have to do is do what's called a spring pass and that's basically where we bring the cutter up, find the bore with the cutter and do one run. I've installed in here in the uh, milling machine a um, 
uh, boring head. And this boring head is uh, a way of uh, boring in place to a fixed dimension. So it has a couple of uh, measurements. Uh, as we turn this dial, it offsets this carriage, which offsets this boring cutter, so it'll bore the hole out. Uh, you can see written here is that every turn, every increment marked on this uh, changes it by 0.01 millimeters. So each one of those increments is 0.01 millimeters. Does that mean it increases the hole by 0.1 millimeter or 0.01 millimeters for every uh, turn? No, actually it would be 0.02 for every turn. Well, for every increment on this that we increase it. Because remember, it's taking it off both sides because it's a circle, it's a diameter. So if you move it out by 0.1, it'll take 0.1 off all the way around. So it'll increase the bore by 0.02. Now there is other versions of these cutters where they have them, what they're called incremental, which is where that is taken into account. So in other words, every time you turn this uh, point uh, what looks like one increment on this, if it says 0.01, it'll increase the bore by 0.01. But I know uh, from years of using this cutter that that's not the way this one is marked out. This one's marked out the other way. So for a spring pass, the first thing we do is we bring the cutter down uh, into the bore. This will be a little bit hard for you to see. Um, but basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the tip of that cutter to just caress the bore. We know we're on center from our center finder. So we start bringing in that cutter until we start feeling it uh, caress the bore. Bring my mic in there close so you can hear that. So that is just starting to touch. And if I bring it around, it touches the whole way around which is another indication that we're dead on center. What we do is we nip up the adjusting screws here, uh, and then we'll back the cutter out, start the mill machine and do a spring pass. All a spring pass does is shows us where we are and uh, what the centers are like on our bores. Okay, so bring this guy up start up the mill machine. I'm running here at about um, 350, 400 RPM. I've got TCM inserts in the bore and I found them to work really well at this kind of speed. And um, if you're unfamiliar with your milling machine, you might have to kind of practice a little bit with it. So I'm just feeding this down nice and slowly to get a spring pass and to just to see how our setup is with the cutter. How does it like to cut? So we're listening here for any kind of chatter or um, any kind of movement that might be in the arm. And we're just feeding down nice and slow and taking our first pass. Just to see. Now, hopefully you can hear this on the mic. I'm gonna bring it in closer for you. Hear that kind of a stuttering sound. That stuttering sound is the actual cutter missing now. As I start getting deep down into this bore, it's actually missing spots of the bore. I'll try and get a light in here to show you. Okay, we've reached the bottom of the bore there now. So what has happened is, as it's boring down, it's at the start it was cutting completely concentrically all the way around, and then as it got down deep into the bore, it started to miss. Why would it miss? The reason it's doing that, lads, is for what I told you, that the bores aren't in line. So there isn't alignment between this spindle and this bore. They're somewhat out of alignment. So as my cutter goes down, my cutter appears not to be following the bore. Now it is following the trajectory of this shaft, but it's not following the trajectory of the bore. And that is a problem uh, with these arms. And I found this across the board with these arms over the years as I've rebuilt them. And it's one of the reasons why I do this modification because it allows me to get the arm squared again. Okay, we're gonna just take one quick measurement now to see where that spring pass brought us. And then we'll start doing some boring and we'll get this out to size. So that brought us bang on up to 24 millimeters, which is a lovely starting point for us. We're gonna write that measurement down. We're at 24. I just write them on the arm. Uh, it can be just rubbed off with a bit of solvent afterwards and it just uh, keeps it in my head where we're at. Now we know we need 27 is the diameter but we want to go just a touch less than 27 and um, if 27 was the the number that uh, we picked we said we wanted it to be sort of 26.9 uh, 
0.95 or 26.9. I think we'll shoot for 26.9 and then we'll try a bearing fit at that and then we might just take it one more spring pass out of it to go to maybe 26.92 or three, just to give us about 0.1 of a press fit on that bearing. So we'll take a couple of bores here now and then we'll see where we go. Okay, so I've taken my last uh, pass there now and I have this uh, bore sitting at 26.93. Uh, I've done a tiny little uh, undercut here just at the very tip of it uh, where I've taken it to exactly 27. Uh, it'll put just a little tiny lip. What that means is that the bearing can actually just sit in there and it'll be press fit from there on out. So what I'll use here is I'll just use the milling machine uh, to push the bearing in just uh, pinch up the housing and we'll just come down here and we'll just use the actual quill of the mill machine to push the bearing into place so we're just pushing that bearing home all the way and getting it into where it needs to go and then just the last little bit uh, will be a squeeze in the press and that will push the bearing home where it needs to go and uh, we will uh, come back to you then and we'll try the pin in it and see how it is Okay, we're back over at the bench. The bearing is press fit all the way in and I've just tried a pin in it just to see what way it is. I've pinched up both of our bolts and I've set the end flow clearance here now on the end of the shaft. That's something else as well that can be wrong on these sometimes and can kind of leave them a bit tight or can leave them slack. So it's at the stage now where it's lovely and free. Uh, it's moving just perfectly uh, with uh, very light amount of pressure with the spanner which is exactly where I want that to be I want it to be just that nice fit with a bit of grease uh, and that will give us a really good serviceable arm what has happened there is um, we now have a pin that is completely true with the pin that the wheel will turn on meaning that when we put this arm into a subframe that we know is square then we know the arm is square and we know we're going to get a much truer straighter tracking car much better base to start from than the setup with the bronze bush so that's just a trick that i've been doing for the last couple of years and i thought i'd bring it to you guys just to show you it's pretty achievable it's an easy enough thing to do um, with just a bit of careful setup and uh, take your time with a bit of machining and you'll end up with a really uh, much improved arm hope you enjoyed the video guys just uh, a look at some more machining i know you have asked uh, recently in the comment section to see more machining work that i do here in the shop so i thought i'd bring that little job along for you so that you could see some uh, different forms of machining as well it's not just all on the lathe we do stuff in the mill machine as well and do stuff with other components than just the engines hope you enjoyed it if you did give us a like and if you're new to the channel you're very very welcome thanks for coming along and joining us on the video don't forget to subscribe to be kept up to date with all the latest content as we release it and i'll see you on the next one